this video will cover some essential tools that will help improve your organization and efficiency in google sheets in the last video we covered some basic formatting tools that helped us turn this spreadsheet right here into this spreadsheet so i recommend taking a look at that video first if you haven't already especially if you're new to using google sheets so now that our spreadsheet is a bit neater and more organized we're going to look at some additional tools that will help improve our ability to use all of this data here. And if you want to click along with me during the video, both the original and newly formatted spreadsheets are linked in the video description. So previously we sorted this column alphabetically by clicking here and then clicking sort sheet A through Z. So all students are currently sorted by their last names. But if we try to sort again by an additional value, such as bus number or group number, we'll lose the original sort. So now all of my students are grouped together in their bus, but they are no longer grouped by their last name. So what we have to do is use some advanced sorting tools. So I'm going to select my entire spreadsheet, and then I'm going to come up here to data and then sort range. Since our spreadsheet has headers, I'm going to select data has header row. So now it lists the title of each of my columns. I'm going to start with bus number. So all students assigned to bus one will be grouped together first. And then I'm going to click add another sort column and select the additional subgroups that I want sorted. So let's do group leader and then group and then last name. So you can see now that my data is much more useful from a visual standpoint. I have all of my students in bus one grouped together, but then I also have them grouped with their group leaders, their groups, and then by last name as well. So this is going to make using this information much more useful. Now let's say we want to view or print the groups for each chaperone separately. So each chaperone only gets the list for their specific group rather than all of this other extra information that they might not necessarily need. One way to do this would be to basically copy and paste since everything's already sorted by group. It's not too much trouble to just copy and then add a new sheet down here and then paste right in here. So we have the original spreadsheet here, but we've created a new sheet with only this particular chaperones list. But this isn't the most efficient way to do this. You can actually use something called the filter tool, and that's going to make this process a lot more efficient. So to enable filters on my sheet, I'm going to select my header row right here, and then I'm going to come up to data and then create a filter. And you can see that these little funnel icons have appeared at the top of each of my columns. And just as a side note, I'm going to resize that so that everything fits in one cell. So when I click on this little funnel, you'll see that it pulls up a variety of filtering options, and then I can select whatever data I want to filter out or keep in. So I'm going to clear everything and then just select my first chaperone right here. And you can see that it has now filtered out the information from all of the other chaperones. So theoretically, I could print this sheet and then I could move on to the next chaperone. Print this sheet and move on to the next. So this is a very useful tool in Google Sheets and in my opinion, one of the most useful and there are a lot of different ways that you can use this. So if you're interested in the filter tool, make sure to check out my bonus video on how I use the filter tool to manage my classroom library. And I will link that in the video description for you if you'd like to check it out. The sorting and filter tools are also useful if we need to get a quick count of something. And there are formulas that we could use for this as well, but I'm going to cover some formulas and other helpful functions in a later video. So for now, I'm just going to filter these cells real quick so that I can get a quick count of how many different sandwich types that I need to order. So now that I filtered and I only have students that are ordering ham subs, all I have to do is actually highlight these cells here and then you can see that account has popped up in this bottom corner right here. So this tells me that I need to order 15 ham subs. Then again, I can move on to turkey subs, highlight, and you can see that I need to order 19 turkey subs. So again, this is another just helpful way if you need to get a quick count of something. You can see that I have 13 veggie subs and I am good to start my ordering. 
Another one of my favorite Google Sheets tools is conditional formatting, and this is what allows us to automatically assign specific values like background color or text style, depending on the contents of the cell. For example, I used conditional formatting on the student growth data tracker, and this allows me to very quickly and easily see which students made positive, negative, or neutral growth based on the colors of the cells. And conditional formatting did this for me automatically based on a few rules that I set in advance. Back to our field trip planning sheet, I'm going to show you how to use conditional formatting to automatically highlight the students who haven't turned in their permission slips yet. So I'm going to click on this column here, and then I'm going to come up to format and then conditional formatting. Here is where I set my rules. So I'm going to say format cells if text contains and then no. So now you can see that automatically the students who have no in the permission slip return column are automatically highlighted. And of course I can change the color as well. Now you can also see that conditional formatting applies in advance of the cell's contents being populated and then also while. So for example, if I just come down here and I add a new student, and let's say they have not yet turned in their permission slip, I'm just going to type no. And you can see that it has automatically highlighted that in red. So there's no need to go back and set additional formatting rules if you've already set the rules for whatever column or data you're looking for. We can also set the formatting rules so that it will highlight the entire row in red rather than just the single cell. So to do that, we're actually going to undo the formatting that we just added. So we'll come back up here and then delete. And then I'm going to add another rule. Now, because I want this to apply to the entire range, I'm going to select everything here. And then come over here to format cells, if, and then select custom formula. Now we'll talk about functions and formulas a little bit more in the next video. So for now, here's the formula that you'll need. Just the little equal sign here. And then for our purposes, we want C1 equals no. And basically the C refers to column C, which is the column containing the field trip permission response. So if you try this with a different spreadsheet, just make sure that this letter corresponds with whatever column you want to reference then this is basically the value that we want to trigger the formatting. Basically, we're telling Google Sheets that if column C contains the word no, then we want to highlight the entire row. And you can see that, again, this is basically what it has done here. Another tool that I love in Google Sheets is something called data validation. And you can basically use this to create drop down menus in your cells. So for example, you can see that in my monthly planning calendar, I have this emoji drop down menu right here. I can select different types of emojis depending on how they correspond with my to-do list items. And in this case, this drop down menu is mostly just for fun. But you can use data validation to save time when populating spreadsheets, and it will also help ensure that your data entries remain consistent, which is super helpful when you're trying to sort and organize. So what I'm going to do now is show you how we can use the data validation on this spreadsheet to save us time when populating the information. Let's say we did not have the lunch choices already set for us. So I'm going to delete this column here. And like I said in the first video, Google Forms is a really good way to collect information. So if I could have students select their lunch choices on the Google Form, I'm definitely going to do that. But if I do have to manually enter the lunch choices or t-shirt sizes by hand, taking a moment to create a drop-down menu is going to save me a lot of time in the long run. So first I'm going to select the cells where I want the drop-down menu to appear. And in this case, it's going to be the entire column. And I'm going to come up here to data and then data validation. And you can see in my criteria that there are a lot of different options, so you can definitely take some time to explore. But for now, we're going to select list of items, and then I'm going to enter the lunch choices separated by a comma. And then if I click on the little drop down, you can see that I can very easily and quickly add in the lunch choices. So if I am manually collecting paper permission slips, I can just very quickly 
select turkey sub, veggie sub, bringing from home, etc. So this is a really helpful tool that will save you time when you are inputting information. Now before we go, I just want to share a couple other helpful tools in Google Sheets. So let's say I want to create another spreadsheet, but it's related to this field trip. Instead of having to create an entirely new spreadsheet, I'm just going to add another spreadsheet in the same file by clicking on this little plus sign right here. Now you can see that it pops up and I've got these little tabs that I can toggle between at the bottom. And then if I right mouse click, I can do things like rename the sheet. I can copy it to a new spreadsheet if I wanted to. I could duplicate, delete, or hide. And hiding the spreadsheet will make the little tab go away. And then I can pull it back up by clicking on all sheets and selecting it again. So for demonstration purposes, I am just going to show you an example. So let's say I am working on all of my field trip information, but I also have some checklists and some things that I need to accomplish. So to create this, I used a lot of the formatting tools that I showed you in video one. So this right here was the merging tool with the rotation, things like borders, all that good stuff. So to add in some checklists, I'm going to just insert a column here to my left. I'm going to resize and then I'm going to select just these cells right here and then come over here to insert checkbox. And now I have a series of checkboxes that I can select as each task has been completed. I can also hyperlink text just as I would any other Google app. So let's just say that I want to confirm date and location with venue and maybe I have a web address that I want to revisit. I could just highlight this, right mouse click, select insert link, and I could paste in my destination link from there. So that's going to conclude video two. I hope by now you're starting to feel a little more comfortable using Google Sheets. And remember that even though we're practicing everything with this mock field trip sheet, all of these skills like the advanced sorting that we did or the filter tool, all of these things can be applied to whatever spreadsheet you are working with. Stay tuned for video three, where we discuss some essential formulas and functions that every teacher needs to know. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and I will see you in the next video.